everyone. So we wanted to give you an update about what's going on in our lives after our video of the boat tour of my year. So I have come back to the Maldives. I work on a resort and I work at a dive center. So I have come back to top up our cruising kitty while uh, Derek is back in Malaysia and he is living on board Mahia and he is doing some essential boat work. So he's getting our boat cruising ready because we plan to move aboard permanently next year. So yeah, while I'm here, I'm pretty sure he is doing a great job because he's sending me updates daily. Great great workmanship Derek <laughs> so yeah I'm pretty sure that he is eating well I'm pretty sure that he is taking enough fluids every day and I'm pretty sure he's being responsible yeah I'm pretty sure he's doing all right In this episode, we are fixing, cleaning, grinding, sailing our boat, sailing somebody else's boat, and solar docking. So after months of waiting, Nicole's mattress topper finally arrived. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna try and put it in. Okay, see how this goes. So if you're looking for any kind of advice about anything, the best thing to do is go to actual sailors in actual marinas who can help you out. Meet Mark. Mark has helped us with a rescue, donated some canvas, and he's going to assist with some solo docking techniques. Some of these come from Duncan Wells' book, Stress Free Sailing, and the rest has been adapted according to Maya's size and docking. Here we see Maya in a berth. We're very fortunate we have nobody next to us, so departing and coming in is a little bit easier. At this stage, all the mooring lines have been removed, and the boat has been set up for a single handed departure. We are currently attached to the dock with three lines. The first line is the stern line. This is set up as a slip line, so everything is controlled from the cockpit. The line leads from the boat through the cleat and back onto the boat. It's the first line we will release. The next line we have a look at is a bridle. It's basically a loop that runs from the boat over the cleat and back to the boat. The length of this line has been predetermined depending on how the boat sits on the dock. So this length cannot change, and this will be the last line that we will release. Our aim is to try and do as much from the cockpit as possible. Our third line is a bow line. Although it's a bow line, it's controlled by the cockpit. So we have a line running from a winch or a cleat, running through to the bow of the boat, round the cleat on the dock, back through a separate fair lead, and all the way back to another winch or area in the cockpit. This line should be free of obstructions so it doesn't snag when you're slipping it and bringing it back on board. The line can be slipped by releasing one end and bringing it back on board through the other end. Now as we engage reverse gear we only have one last line to worry about and that's the bridle line. As we move past the dock cleat all we have to do is slip the line over the cleat and bring it safely back on board. <laughs> calm down, calm down. We still have to bring her back in again. 
<laughs> As I approach the dock, the first line I have ready is the bridle. We know this has been measured correctly, so if we can just get it over the dock fleet, it's going to bring the boat to rest without a problem. Once I'm happy that the bridle is over the dock lead, I can step on the dock and control the vessel. Yeah, I might have to move bow or stern depending on the conditions and decide which lines to secure first. So because Nicole's not here, if I want to sail, I have to solar sail. So on the solar cell, there's a couple of things I need to do. The first thing is to get the telepilot to work. So this will be able to hold the boat in the wind while I tend to sails, or maybe on a certain course while I do other things. And since we got on the boat, we have not been able to get power to this thing. There's nothing on the DC panel that's marked Raymarine, ST, or telepilot, or anything close. So that's my first task. See ya. First step, I've checked all the circuit breakers and now I'm going to follow the lines from where the power runs from the back through to the circuit board see if I can find anything obvious along the way of course one of these comes in super handy they're super cheap because it doesn't work so follow the lines they run there okay other side here we go the lesson that we can learn from this. If you make changes on your boat, and you probably will do, especially when it comes to electrics, change the markings so everyone knows what's going on. I'm very lucky that the lines that were running from the telepilot from outside, the cables, were so unique that I could follow them here to where they went. And they came into this switch here. I then realized that the solder had come loose from the main power to that line there. So I am in process of getting a solder back on here and we can sort it out. However, this switch is not even marked telepilot. This switch is marked 220 volt. So at some stage it was used for something else or 220 volt means telepilot. I don't know. Anyway, we make changes, mark them, record them. It clearly says 220V. 20 volts, so Pilot sorted, let's hit the water.
So remember, Mark. Well, Mark and I went out for a dinner and a drink one evening and bumped into two Aussies who were keen on sailing. They come from a place called Wagga Wagga in Australia. Yes, Wagga Wagga. It's really a place. Look it up. And when he heard they were keen for sailing, he decided, what the hell, let's go out for a sail. asked me to send in some pictures of our, our wiring and a bus bar so I sent him this <laughs> and nobody knows where he is I think he's still running he refuses to come here I don't blame him so our good friend Robbie the legend that he is from Anderson Marine borrowed us his hydraulic crimper and we're gonna try and sort this out 